Hi there. My name is Abo Chikanda and I am an assistant professor at the University of Kansas. I am originally from Zimbabwe and I left the country 12 years ago when Zimbabwe's economy took a downturn. I lived in Canada for 10 years before immigrating to the United States two years ago. Most of my research focuses on the integration of African immigrants in the United States. The Migration Policy Institute defines immigrant integration as the process of economic mobility and social inclusion for newcomers and their children. In other words, we are talking about how migrants fit into the host society. The United States is a, is a country that was built through immigration. Millions of people have moved to the country from different parts of the world and have made the United States their new permanent home. I believe that most of us can trace our ancestry to a different continent such as Africa, Asia, Europe, and Latin America. This is the reason why some people say the United States is a nation of immigrants. Africans in particular have a fairly long history of settlement in the United States. A large number of the African population were transported to the United States during the time of slavery and we now call descendants of these individuals African Americans. However, in my research, I am interested in people who were born in Africa and later migrated to the United States. I ask questions such as, why did they leave their respective home countries in Africa? How have they managed to fit into the American society? Is their integration affected in any way by the reasons which led them to leave their home country in the first place? To help me answer these questions, I used data from the American Community Survey, which is administered by the United States Census Bureau. The African-born population is one of the fastest growing immigrant groups in the United States. Prior to 1960, African immigration to the United States was very low, but increased rapidly within the next decade. By 1990, there were more than 360,000 African-born immigrants living in the United States, a substantial increase from the 35,000 recorded in, in 1960. By 2010, the African-born uh, population had increased to uh, 1.6 million before further rising to 2 million by 2015. An important question to ask is, how does the African born population compare to the foreign born population in the United States? Does the recent increase in African immigration mean that they are now one of the important immigrant groups in the country? An analysis of uh, the American Community Survey data shows that prior to the year 2000, the African-born population was one of the least visible immigrant groups in the country. In 1960, the African-born population made up only 0.4% of the foreign-born population. By 2015, African, the African-born population comprised 4.8% of the foreign-born population in the country. So as this graph shows, the African-born population is likely to become one of the important immigrant population uh, groups in the United States in the coming years. So which countries do these African immigrants come from? Data from the American Community Survey shows that East and West Africa are the main source regions of African immigrants to the United States. So we see West Africa being the source country, the source region rather of uh, more than 766,000 um, uh, African immigrants living in the United States. And that's followed by East Africa, uh, which is the source region of uh, more than 612,000 African immigrants in the United States, followed by North Africa um, uh, with uh, the source region of uh, more than 345,000 uh, uh, individuals living in the US, Central Africa, source region of uh, more than 120 
8,000 uh, individuals, uh, and lastly, uh, Southern Africa, the source region of 98, more than 98,000 uh, individuals living in the U.S. So in terms of uh, individual uh, countries, the main source regions uh, include uh, Nigeria, uh, which was the source country of more than 323,000 uh, individuals living in the U.S. Uh, in 2015, and that's followed by Ethiopia, uh, the source country of more than 228,000 uh, individuals living in the U.S., and uh, uh, that's uh, followed uh, by Ghana, uh, source country of more than 155,000, and uh, also uh, significant here is Kenya with uh, uh, close to 130,000 immigrants in the U.S. Um, and we also have uh, Egypt, uh, source country of more than 185,000 uh, individuals living in the U.S. And finally, uh, South Africa, the source country of uh, about uh, 94,000 individuals living uh, in the United States. So for the period uh, 2000 to uh, 2015, immigrants from uh, Central Africa, they recorded the highest rate of growth uh, that's uh, more than 160%, while the lowest rate of growth was registered by immigrants from Southern Africa with a rate of growth of 9.4% uh, uh, for this uh, period 2005 to 2015. Immigrants enter the United States using a wide range of entry permits. We can use data from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security on immigrants who became permanent residents to determine the entry categories of Africans into the country. Between 2000 and 2015, a total of 1,383,000 Africans became permanent residents of the United States. Out of these, 552,000 or 40 percent of these uh, permanent residents had entered as immediate relatives of U.S. citizens, while a substantial number had entered as refugees or asylum seekers. So that's 26 percent had entered as uh, refugees or as asylum seekers, while uh, a further 26 percent had entered under the diversity program and 7% uh, uh, had entered under uh, family sponsored preferences. So only a small proportion had entered the country under the employment based uh, uh, preferences program. So what this figure shows us is that uh, social networks are playing a huge role in African immigration to the United States. On the other hand, political disturbances in some African countries are causing people to flee to the United States as refugees. As this map shows, the African-born population is distributed unevenly across the United States. Nine states have African-born populations above 80,000. These include New York, with the highest population of 100. 181,000 African-born persons in 2015, followed by Texas with uh, 172,000, California with 170,000, Maryland with uh, 136,000, New Jersey with uh, 98,000, Virginia with 95,000, uh, Massachusetts with uh, 92,000, Minnesota 87,000 and Georgia with uh, 85,000 African born persons. The lowest uh, population of African born population in the United States is found in Montana that had just 660 
uh, people in 2015 as well as Wyoming that had uh, 970 African-born persons uh, um, uh, in the state. Closer to home, Kansas had uh, 11,600 African-born persons, while Missouri had 19,800 African-born persons in 2015. There is strong evidence of concentration of the African-born population in certain metropolitan areas. Data from the American Community Survey shows that 61% of the African-born population reside in just 21 U.S. metropolitan statistical areas. For instance, more than 240,000 African-born persons reside in the New York, Newark, New Jersey City metropolitan statistical area. In some metropolitan statistical areas, the African-born population is one of the most visible foreign-born uh, population. In the Columbus, Ohio metropolitan area, African-born persons make up nearly a quarter uh, of the total foreign-born population in the area, and we also see almost the same thing happening in uh, the Minneapolis, St. Paul, Bloomington uh, uh, statistical area, where the African-born population make up nearly 22% of uh, the foreign-born uh, population in the metropolitan statistical area. The gender gap in African immigration to the United States is closing rapidly. The proportion of uh, female immigrants rose from 45% in 2000 to 49% in 2015. In the next coming years, females are expected to outnumber males among the African-born population, which generally aligns with the gender structure of the foreign-born population in the United States. In terms of age, nearly 70% of the, Af of the African born population are aged between 18 to 54 years, while 66% of the foreign born population and 50% of uh, the total US population fall in the same age range. Thus, the African born population tends to be younger and in the economically active age range than the general American population. Contrary to popular perception, the African-born population in the United States exhibit higher levels of education than the foreign-born uh, population as well as the general U.S. population. Thus, 41% of the African-born population hold at least a bachelor's degree uh, that's what we see here, uh, compared to 29% of the foreign-born population and 31% of the uh, total or the general U.S. population. And we also see the same thing happening when it comes to uh, 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 graduate or professional degrees that are African born persons tend to be more educated than either uh, the foreign born uh, population or the general US population. So does the high levels of education translate into improved chances of getting a decent job in the United States for the African born population? The available evidence shows that the African-born population has the highest labor force participation rate, that is the number of economically active persons. So we see that uh, in 2015, for example, the African-born population had um, uh, more than 70, almost 74 percent of its population in the labor force compared to 66 percent uh, uh, of the foreign born and 63% of uh, the general US population. Um, however, 
being economically active doesn't mean that uh, one always holds a job. Data from the American Community Survey shows that 68% uh, of uh, the African born population were employed uh, in 2015. Uh, that's more than the 62% of the foreign born uh, population as well as 59% for the uh, uh, total US population. This slide shows that uh, the rate of uh, employment of African born, the African born population is comparable to that of the total or the general US population. Employment in service, in the service industry amongst uh, the African born population is comparable to that of the foreign born population that's uh, in 2015. It's comparable to that of the foreign born population, but uh, way higher than that of the general uh, uh, US uh, uh, population or the national average. Uh, African born persons are poorly represented in the uh, construction, extraction, maintenance and repair occupation where only 3.3% 3 .3 were employed in 2015 compared to 13% uh, for the uh, foreign born population and the national average of 9%. Uh, uh, so clearly uh, the African born population uh, either do not like or they do, do not like the getting into the industry or they face some barriers uh, entering this industry. How does uh, the household income of the African born population compare to that of uh, the foreign born population or that of the general US population? Um, in short, we can note that uh, the mean household, mean annual household income of the African born population compares favorably with that of the foreign born population and also the national average. In 2000, the household income of uh, the African born population was $41,196, uh, which was higher than the $39,444 that was earned by households of foreign born, the foreign born population but it was a little bit lower than the national average of uh, 41,994. It was just lower by uh, a little under seven, a little over $700. Uh, but by 2015, the household income of the African born population had increased uh, to 50,000 one hundred and thirty three uh, dollars but it now lagged behind that of uh, the foreign born population by almost a thousand dollars and way lower than that of uh, uh, the national average of uh, fifty five thousand seven hundred and seventy five dollars Another issue that deserves attention is the access of the African born population to health insurance coverage. Do they hold their own private health insurance or do they rely on government supported uh, health insurance schemes? Data from the American Community Survey shows that in 2015, the African born population had greater health insurance coverage than the foreign born population. So in 2015, 59% compared to 55%, uh, but it was uh, way lower than that of uh, the national average of 67%. Uh, so just 17% uh, of the African born population had no health insurance coverage in 2015. Uh, which is way lower than uh, the 22% uh, of the uh, foreign born population, uh, but uh, being higher than the 
national average of uh, 9%. Uh, reliance on uh, public health insurance was lower among the African-born population uh, than uh, the uh, general U.S. population. So only 27.8% uh, of the African-born population rely on public health insurance compared to the national average of 34.7%. Uh, uh, we can therefore note that uh, there's been a significant rise in African immigration to the United States since the 1980s. However, this growth has not been even. The top 10 sending, uh, African sending countries account for nearly two thirds of African immigration to the United States. In addition, there is evidence of a geographic concentration of Africans in selected cities across the United States. Furthermore, even though Africans have higher labor force participation rates uh, than either the uh, foreign born or the US uh, population, they still experience worse outcomes in terms of uh, uh, income and access to health insurance. So far, we have talked about Africans as a single group. The truth is that Africa is a large and diverse continent made up of 55 different countries. For the sake of comparison, Africa's size is, or area is roughly three times that of the United States. African countries have different levels of development and the push factors that cause people to migrate differ from country to country. As a result, it is not appropriate to consider African immigrants in the United States as a single entity. Therefore, it is necessary to consider a few select groups of African immigrants to, to illustrate their uh, varied integration experiences in the United States. I have selected immigrants from two African countries, Nigeria and Somalia, to show the importance of country of origin on how immigrants integrate in the United States. So this is the location map of the two countries that were examined in my study. Somalia is located in East Africa in a region that we call the Horn of Africa. Nigeria is located in West Africa. The two countries have varied histories of immigration to the United States. In 1980, for example, Nigeria had an immigrant population of more than 25,000 individuals living in the U.S., while the immigrant population from Somalia was less than 700. But by 2015, the immigrant population from Nigeria had risen to more than 323,000, while that from Somalia was just slightly under 90,000. So how are Somalis and Nigerians entering the United States? Analysis of data of uh, people who became permanent residents uh, in the United States from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security shows that Nigerians and Somalis entered uh, the United States using different channels. For instance, uh, over 78% of the Somalis uh, who became permanent residents of the U.S. between 2000 and 2015 entered as refugees, while most Nigerians entered as immediate relatives of U.S. citizens, that's uh, nearly 58%, or under the diversity program, that's a further 23%. In addition, more Nigerians than Somalis entered the country under the family-sponsored or employment-based uh, preferences, uh, which we can see here, 10.9 versus 
uh, 1.6 percent for the family sponsored, sponsored preferences as well as 6.1 uh, percent versus 0 0.6 for the employment based uh, uh, preferences. So it is clear from this analysis that the Somali immigrant population entered the country largely under the humanitarian program while Nigerians enter the country mostly as economic migrants or under the family reunification program. Nigerians who have entered the country mostly as economic migrants, they tend to settle in the bigger states with a lot of economic opportunities such as Texas, Maryland, New York, and California. Uh, Whilst uh, refugee populations are channeled uh, towards states that have favorable policies towards immigrants. It is therefore little wonder that nearly a third of uh, the Somali immigrant population are found in Minnesota. So in Minnesota, there are 25,000, more than 25,000 uh, Somalis living there out of a total of 83,000 uh, living in uh, the entire country. But if uh, Minnesota is such a cold place, why would refugees from tropical Africa choose to settle there? Well, Minnesota is such a liberal state and has a long history of accepting refugees from countries such as Bosnia and Vietnam. In addition, there are a lot of organizations present in that state already working on refugee resettlement. Besides, cities such as Minneapolis offer economic opportunities to refugees. As we might expect, Nigerian-born immigrants have higher levels of educational attainment than Somalis, and uh, that's because most of the Somalis do enter the country as refugees, while least, uh, Nigerians do enter the country as uh, economic migrants, so uh, they can only uh, make it through the system if they have high levels of education, whereas uh, refugees, because of the uh, war situation, uh, they might not be able to uh, go to school, hence uh, their uh, levels of educational attainment uh, might be lower. So more than uh, two-thirds of uh, the Somali-born immigrants have completed only high school uh, or less, while 70% of Nigerian-born immigrants possessed post-secondary educational qualifications. We have already seen that uh, the labor force participation rate, it measures the proportion of the population who are either employed or looking for work. Even though the labor force uh, partic participation rate for the Somali-born population lags behind that of the Nigerian-born population or the African-born uh, population, uh, there are signs that the gap is uh, slowly closing. So we see, for instance, uh, in 2000, uh, the labor force participation rate of the Somalis was just 58%, but by 2015, it had risen to 67.8%. While it's that of uh, the African born population, uh, the Nigerian born population actually declined from 78% in 2000 to 76.7%. 7 and that of the uh, African born population, it rose marginally from 71.1% uh, to 73.7%. ,7 so, in this respect, we can actually note that uh, the uh, labor force participation rate of the Somali-born population is improving over time. By studying the occupational profiles of Nigerians and Somalis in the United States, we observe that uh, different immigrant groups can establish a certain niche market which they exploit for economic gain. 
Thus, we see Nigerians employed mostly in management and professional positions. Uh, if we look at the year 2015, 53% uh, of the Nigerian born population were employed in management, professional, and related occupations compared to just 14% of the uh, Somali born population or 38.5% of uh, the uh, African-born uh, population. While Somalis, they occupy mainly sales and office positions uh, in 2015, for instance, 19.4% of the Somali-born population were in sales of, and office, comp office occupations, which is higher than the 14.6% for the Nigerian-born or even higher high again than the average for the African-born uh, population. And uh, uh, the Somalis, they are also heavily involved in the pro production, transportation, and material moving occupation in 2015. For instance, more than 38% of the Somali-born population were in this occupation compared, say, to just 8.6% for the Nigerian-born population, or the average for the African-born population of 15.2%. Uh, Educational attainment and occupation are strongly correlated with household income. Not surprisingly, the highly educated Nigerian-born professionals who occupy mainly management and professional positions and way more than the Somali-born population. In 2000, Somali-born households and about $18,000 uh, uh, while households of Nigerian-born immigrants and more than uh, uh, $45,000. Uh, so that's the household income, I mean annual household income. But uh, by 2015, the gap it had grown tremendously. Uh, Somali-born uh, immigrant household earned nearly $24,000 compared to uh, the more than 61000 that was earned by uh, a Nigerian-born household, and that's still lower than the African-born average of $50,000. So clearly, immigrant groups that are dominated by refugees suffer poor integration outcomes, and that's reflected in uh, uh, the low or the poor household uh, income. Uh, finally, does better economic integration of uh, Nigerians equate to better health care coverage? And does the lack of economic resources leave Somalis without health care coverage? As many as 68% of the Nigerian-born uh, population hold private health insurance policies compared to only 30% uh, of uh, the Somalis. However, public uh, health insurance coverage uh, helps ensure that uh, refugee pop populations have medical insurance through programs such as Medicare. This leaves only 12% of uh, the Somalis without any health coverage compared to 17% uh, of uh, the Nigerian-born uh, population who do not have any form of uh, health insurance coverage. In this case, government-run health insurance programs help ensure that uh, vulnerable populations such as refugees are able to live uh, decent and healthy lives. To conclude this lecture, we can note that the African immigrant community in the United States is huge, growing, and diverse. This challenges the notion of a single African diaspora. This lecture shows, that, shows the importance of identifying Africans according to the countries 
which they come from and not to view them as a single group. We have seen that the Nigerian-born population compares favorably with the general U.S. population on a host of measures. Meanwhile, the Somali-born population faces severe disadvantages that can be attributed to poor education and fewer social connections which are essential for success in job search. However, it is worth noting that despite these challenges, they are making significant progress on a number of measures. I would like to acknowledge the support of the Center for Migration Research and the Institute for Policy and Social Research at the University of Kansas for funding the research. Thank you for your time. Goodbye.